G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and for today's video I'm going to show you a little trick in Automation Studio that will allow you to run script only functions in your SSGS activities. So my use case for today is going to be to use the Salesforce Create Object script function to automate the process of creating case objects in Sales Cloud based on a data extension in Marketing Cloud. So I've got here a data extension which is my subscribers to create a new case for. Now this data extension could be populated by an SQL query or by a filtered data extension. The goal here being a list of subscribers that I need to create a case for. If I have a look inside my case object here, I have my one subscriber, which I'm going to create a new case called update the contact details. And the reason being because the customer's email is bouncing. And so I want to push this case into my Salesforce sales cloud. Now this is going to be for my subscriber key here, which relates to Rose. You can see here that Rose currently has no cases created on her account. So as soon as we run this activity, we should find a brand new case created for her. So let me show you how this works. The first thing I have to do over in Marketing Cloud is go into Content Builder and make myself a brand new HTML content block for my script code. In this content block, I'm going to write out my script code to upsert that brand new case for the subscriber. So I'm going to do the following code. I'm going to look up the data extension of my subscribers to create the case for where the action value is equal to one. That is only get the subscribers in the data extension where action is equal to one, which of course rows is. My next step is to iterate through all those rows using my for loop on row count to pick up the values of subscriber key, case name and description and save them as values to then use the create Salesforce object activity. I've got a video on this, which I'll link below as well to make the case with those five fields. Now, if the case is created successfully, it's going to produce a value for create. That is, if create is not empty, I'm going to update that data extension to now set the action to be equal to zero for that subscriber key. That is to make sure that rows will not get reprocessed a second time if this activity reruns in Automation Studio. So with all that AMP script completed, I can now put it into my server-side JavaScript activity in Automation Studio. So here we have a brand new automation with a single script activity. This activity has the code that we need to run our AMP script inside of server-side JavaScript. Now, Matthias has a fantastic blog article on how to run AMP script inside of server-side JavaScript using the treat as content function. I'll make sure I've got a link to this in the description below if you check it out for yourself. But let me show you how it works. Inside Automation Studio, we're going to have a look at our treat as content function, allowing us to render the content within as code through Marketing Cloud. And of course, the content block by ID function is the AMP script function to look up that content block ending in 178. Go back into our content builder. We can see for ourselves my content block ending in 178. So it's going to look up that content, produce the AMP script, render it, and load it into our SSJS, which means we can use SSJS now to create a brand new case in Salesforce Sales Cloud. So that all done, let's go finish and run the activity. I'll save my automation and go run once. So the automation has just started and hopefully it finishes any second now and complete in just 15 seconds. So with a green light, we can now go back into our sales cloud and check out our contact record for rows. Now in our details here, we show zero cases, but if I refresh my page, hopefully for rows, we now have one new case credit and we do. So in the cases, we can now see the update contact details case was created and see it's a brand new case, of course, with the source being email and update details with the description being created by marketing customers email is bouncing. Please contact this customer and update their records. Perfect. I can also now go back and check in that other piece of code. We did have that little bit of AMP script, of course, which said if it is created successfully, change the action value to be equal to zero. So. Jumping back into my data extension, let's now check out to make sure that that record now shows zero as the option for action, which means it won't run again if we do reprocess it, and zero, perfect. So as you can imagine, you could run this kind of automation to pick up records that need to have a new task or a new case or some of the action that takes place inside of your Salesforce sales cloud, running this as an automation to run every hour or every day. It's going to be really useful if you have to make batch updates from data that only exists inside of Salesforce Marketing Cloud and saves you having to export that data and giving it to your Salesforce Sales Cloud admin. So hopefully this walkthrough gives you some ideas of how you can make your workflow processes easier inside of Salesforce Marketing Cloud and Sales Cloud. 
If it has, I'd love to know what you plan to create in the comments below. And make sure you give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it today. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.